You're listening to That Gets My Go on the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Hey folks, this is Rich Outfield. Yes, and Big Anklevich. And we're back once again. And yesterday I, 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 I mentioned Hugh Jackman to you. And, and I don't know if you feel the exact same way as I do. I, I love Hugh Jackman. There's something... I don't feel the same way as you. I don't want to sleep with Hugh Jackman, no. Well, if you had to sleep with somebody. <laughs> no. Uh, I, and everybody has people that rub them the wrong way and people that, that push the right buttons. Rub them the, the right, right way? Eh? And this is an episode eh? I wanted to talk about in... We were going to do a video podcast one time about people that are just... That I hate, that I can't... If it's a movie with them in it, I don't want to see that movie. That that's how I respond to them. But then there's the opposite kind of thing. And I, I remember when I was a kid, my dad would say, any movie that Harrison Ford makes is worth seeing. And I was like, oh, I agree. He was in Indiana Jones. And when I was a teenager... Sean Connery had something of a resurgence after Untouchables. And I remember a reviewer say, Sean Connery elevates the material of any movie he's in. If Sean Connery is in it, it's worth seeing. And that was pre-Avengers, of course. But, I, you know, I think that's way about very few actors. And, and Hugh Jackman is one of them. I don't know if, if, if you've ever seen a movie with Hugh Jackman in it where you're just like, that movie was a turd. I don't think so. I'm trying to think of all the ones that I've seen of his. I've only seen so many. I mean, he was in all the uh, X-Men films. And Wolverine was not his best, but it wasn't a turd. He had a great cameo in X-Men uh, First Class. Yeah, I remember Kate and Leopold was the Meg Ryan... Was it a time travel movie? A guy from the yeah, past yeah, sent the to past the present forward. movie. And I, I remember seeing the previews for that and... and they made this big deal about his disgust that people cleaned up doggy do in the, all the trailers and all the TV spots. Cause I guess that was supposed to be the big, he's not of our time. Why do we do this kind of joke? And it didn't appeal to me at all. I was like, that movie <laughs> looks so, so stupid. And I think I ultimately saw it. Opening night. Because, no, <laughs> I saw it because Sting said something about it. He wrote a song uh -huh. called Until that was on the soundtrack or that was in the credits. Or He got an Oscar nomination for that song. It was, and a, it was a great song. One of his said. best songs from post-2000. Oh, definitely. They took him to sh give him a screening of that movie and he enjoyed it so much that he said, oh, I, I, I'd like to write a song for it or something. I can't remember how these things work. If they hired him to write a song for it and then he watched the movie or at that point, he's a big enough star. He could say no. Maybe they show a bunch of musicians a movie and say, would you like to contribute a song to the soundtrack? But he, he liked it. He said he forgot his troubles for an hour and a half or whatever. And so I watched it because of that. I'm sure Sting has lots of troubles. <laughs> Well, he's expected to have sex for two yeah. hours straight. You forgot That's... about how hard it was to keep it up for that long. Well, can you imagine if he was with a woman that's not his wife and she's like, um, that was only 45 minutes. And he's like, there's a little black spot in the sun today. 45 minutes is more than, all right, never mind. Anyhow, I, I thought Kate and Leopold was a really good flick, despite just some really stupid Stuff that they gave Meg Ryan to do. I mean, she was not a likable character. And, it, it, she, they, you know, they, they give her these quirks in all of her movies. And sometimes they're cute and sometimes they're not. But, like, she had broken up with the guy who played Sabretooth, Liev Schreiber. Liev Schreiber? Oh, okay. And I was the other Sabretooth was like, really? She was going on with that wrestler guy? He had a dog collar one of those shock dog collars that he gotten for the dog and she like stole the dog and put that shock collar on Lieb Schreiber and she kept pushing the button to shock him after they had broken up just for fun and anyway I don't know why I'm talking about this but Jackman brought such gravitas and like like he was actually trying in this role that really just required a Lorenzo Lamas type, you know, somebody that was good looking <laughs> to take off his shirt so the women could all go, ooh, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> our friends all he alone. had some kind of charm and, and I, I don't know it was like he gave a crap he was trying and i picked up on that and i started to really like the movie by the time sting's divine song played at the end of the movie i was like wow that was a really good flick and you are about to contradict me by bringing up what? someone like you. Wait, Animal Attraction? Why does it say Animal Attraction here? Is there someone like you there? Why would it be called Animal Attraction in Britain? Why? I can't remember if this is the one. I, s I saw one of his lesser known romantic comedy type films about the time that uh, Kate and Leopold was making its rounds or so. Somewhere in the neighborhood of that time. And that was a good one, too. He did a great job. And I was just like, oh, wow. Oh, it's Wolverine. Awesome. There was The Prestige that he was in, which was very good. I like that, that Christopher one Christopher Nolan flick. Yeah. Wolverine versus Batman in that film. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, did you ever see that Van Helsing movie? Was that, that see, the turd? I, I that wish the one that, that you hadn't mentioned that because my theory was... This guy makes any movie watchable, any movie good or whatever. And I was going to talk about, I was an extra on Swordfish and I got to work with Hugh Jackman and he was the nicest guy. He was even nice to us. And a lot of times the extras are not, not it's not that they're not treated well, but it's like there's no... Nobody gives a crap about them. They nobody gives a crap about them, but there's no them. incentive to treat them well. Right. It's like they're a dime, not even a dozen, but they're a dime a, a, a hundred and he was a nice guy and he signed people's Wolverine comics. And anyhow, uh, then I looked and you looked him up on the IMDb and he was in Van Helsing. And I saw Van Helsing opening night ah. in a Los Angeles theater that cost me like $11 a ticket. And that movie was awful. Yeah. Even with Kate Beckinsale and Hugh Jackman in it. Oh, and Beckinsale was so, so hot in that movie. A hundred times hotter than she is in the Underworld movies. Oh, geez. Still not it's, enough. Yeah, they're, they're hundred million dollars in CG alone in that movie. All these monsters and stuff. And Stephen Summers, the director, had done The Mummy, which I quite liked. He did a flick called Deep Rising that I really liked. Uh, it seems like he had done another movie, and I can't remember what it was, that I liked. But, oh, Van Helsing sucked. And what a great premise, too. Oof. Not well executed, huh? Yeah, I, I think part of the reason I didn't go see G.I. Joe was because Stephen Summers directed it. I was like, yeah, he, that guy did Van Helsing. I don't need to see anything this guy has done. Uh, I was just depressed <laughs> after Van Helsing. Because, yeah, that was one where Universal had pumped a ton of money into it. And there were a couple of monsters they hadn't used that they owned the rights to that they were like, okay, but that's for the sequel. For and they did like an animated film of Van Helsing, which you ever once know, I've, ever since The Matrix, they've been doing that. Where we'll do an animated film because this is so popular. You know, Batman, they did it with. And, right. and Chronicles of Riddick, they did it with. And stuff like that, where it's just like, these are going to be big time franchises. And yeah, it just it crashed and burned. It was an abomination, actually. <laughs> yeah, I never did see that, so I was curious uh, since it was on the list. But yeah, you know, there's only so much you can do. I mentioned a day or two or three or four ago, which was actually just a few minutes ago, hey, hey, uh, that, <laughs> that I watched that Plinkett red letter media review of Star Wars Episode Two. No, oh, no, it was top cop dog oh i did i mean that's right i mentioned it's cop easy dog to confuse those two movies but uh he also did star wars episode two review and i just actually just watched part two of that this morning and one of the things he talks about is why is samuel jackson in these star wars prequels what is he doing there and he talked about how epically miscast samuel jackson was as mace windu you know, Samuel Jackson, you put him in a role of somebody who's intense and crazy, the kind of guy that freaks out, that yells at people, that threatens them, that kicks some ass. He is great in those roles. And, you know, he went through and showed clips of him from, you know, A Time to Kill and Pulp Fiction, et cetera, et cetera, where, and they even have him going, these snakes in this damn plane. And all these movies that are just right for him. And then they have him as Mace Windu. You speak of the prophecy, the one who would bring balance yeah, to the floor. Where he can't get out the terrible lines because they're terrible. And his character is supposed to be this super calm, sit around, do nothing guy. And he's just like, God, he doesn't do anything. 
He's worthless in this movie. It's just terrible that they even have him in here because they could have got any guy. They could have got any black guy to do this. Char- they could have got Morgan Freeman who plays these kind of calm characters. They could have got Forrest Whitaker who plays these kind of kids. They could have got Sidney Poitier who plays these kind of, you know, he went through and he listed like six, eight actors, you know, that they could have got. But Samuel Jackson is a box office draw, so they want him to do that. Samuel Jackson is a good actor, but there's... There's only so much you can do. You can't elevate some things, no matter how good you are. Even if you're Hugh Jackman, you can't save Van Helsing. So, Hey, that was a good... I See, I didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> good job. Let's end on that note. All right. See you later, folks. Have a happy Dupo Remo. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. As if anyone would want to copy this crap. Pushing the button to shock him just for fun. And I was like, whoa, what what are you looking at? Nothing going. He was a voice on Happy Feet. (laughs) There was that. (sighs) 